Welcome to the Mavens Do It Better podcast. And now, your host, Heather Newman. Hello, everyone. Here we are again with another episode of Mavens Do It Better, where we interview extraordinary experts who bring a light to our world. And I am thrilled to have a wonderful person on today, Stephanie Donahue, who is a fellow Microsoft MVP. She is a speaker on the circuit. She's a business owner. She's amazing. So, um, Stephanie, say hello to everybody. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me on. I'm excited. This is fun. I've been following you and the the podcast. You've had some really amazing people on, so I'm I'm quite honored to be here. In good company. So that's awesome. Yeah. So um, so Stephanie and I recently, like the last time we were together, was at the MVP Summit, and uh, got so we were a little bit ships that sail in the night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, little a little bit busy on on both. Both of our parts, I yeah, guess. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So, Stephanie, tell everybody, let's start, where are you from originally? Uh, well, I am kind of based in Ohio. So, right now I'm in Cincinnati. Um, I've always kind of, I've lived in different parts of Ohio for the majority of, of my life. So, very much a Midwesterner. Excellent. Fellow mis- Midwesterner over here as well from Indiana and Illinois. So, that's awesome. Great awesome. place to grow up. And a uh, great place to live. So that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, how long have you been an MVP? Um, I think I'm in the neighborhood of about three years. So I'm still fairly new. I know there's a lot of MVPs that have been around for, for quite some time. Um, but I've, I think it's been about three years for me. Okay. That's awesome. And what's your specialty? So I'm in office servers and services. And my background is, is really rooted in, in SharePoint. Yeah, absolutely. When, you get, when did you get started working in SharePoint? Well, I kind of tripped into it, just like probably everybody <laughs> else in SharePoint. I don't think anybody graduates from college and goes, I want to do SharePoint. Right. I don't know. Maybe that happens now that they actually get exposure to maybe. it. I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, so my background, I kind of started up through the help desk and server support side of the house. And mm-hmm. so I was doing um, a, a lot of uh, you know, the answering service tickets and more of a customer service thing and helping people with laptops as I, as I kind of started in the industry. And I got into SharePoint uh, when I was working for a consulting firm. I was actually doing their internal um, network support and, and help desk. And they had a consultant that was out and unavailable. I think he was already booked on a project. And mm-hmm. I was supporting our internal SharePoint environment, you know, just real basic stuff. And they were like, hey, we're going to send you out to do the SharePoint install since you know SharePoint. And I was like, okay. Um, and I was only supposed to be out there for, you know, just like a day to get the environment set up. And I was going to hand off to the, the consulting resource that they had originally planned to do the project. And they were like, no, we like her. We want to keep her. <laughs> That's awesome. So I actually... I, I got to stay for a couple of weeks and do the project, and that was I kind of just accidentally tripped into the consulting thing that way. And uh, from there on out, you know, they kind of utilized me here and there if they needed an extra SharePoint uh, consulting resource. And I've I've kind of been here ever since. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, I so many of us I think yeah you know and SharePoint sort of I guess. When we all started, it was a new technology, you know what I mean? So it wasn't something that you were like, oh, I want to do that, you know? So many people sort of found it by way of something else. And a lot of people found it through help desk, you know, and being part of an IT team, for sure, you know? Um, And, you know, SharePoint being so easy to use... (laughs) <laughs> and it, it takes a different skill set right yeah. I think that's that's how I ended up there was that you know I was still out to kind of prove myself and be like I'm as good as the guys and I can go do exchange and I can do domain migrations and I can do all this stuff and and I had a boss kind of pull me aside and he was like look you're good at SharePoint like why you know why are you shying away from this you need to embrace this and, and go do this thing and right. um, I you know I thought about it and I was like you know it, maybe he's right. Maybe I should go do this. And then that's really, you know, his guidance was why I decided to change my focus to SharePoint. And um, it was a great thing because before SharePoint was kind of a, in the mix with everything else I was doing. And, and it really became a focus at that point. And, yeah. and taking that advice has certainly served me well. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And as it, you know, it's, we all have mentors, right? And we all have people in our lives that kind of give us a nudge 
to the right way. And um, I heard some news from you about you just won an award, speaking of mentorship. Why don't you tell everybody about that? Because that's super awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. So <laughs> I've been participating in the uh, Microsoft Mentorship Program. It's part of the diversity and inclusion branch at Microsoft. And, and the idea is that um, we, we place um, mentees and mentors together. So if you're looking for help, you can apply as a mentee. Um, and if you're looking to help others, you can apply as a mentor. And they match people based on what your skill set is versus what um, someone might be looking for assistance on. So I've done it uh, a couple of times now. I just, it sounds like we're at the end of our second cycle. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end, they give this uh, opportunity to the mentees to give feedback on their mentor on how things went. Right. And um, my my mentee this time, Mike, he's he's awesome. He and, and he had submitted some nice feedback. And as a result, I guess they now have a most valuable mentor award, which I was um very, I'm very excited to be the very first recipient of that, and so <laughs> yeah. um, it's it's great. I'm excited. It's such a good program, and and Mike, um, I've also worked with Joanne. She she tweeted me as well when all that came out, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's so exciting to be able to give back uh, and kind of you know share some of the knowledge that that I've gained over time because IT is a rough business, and yep. there's a lot of politics and things to navigate, and so. I think that program is, is amazing and it's a lot of fun to be able to work with others that are kind of coming up through getting to know the community and, and getting to know others. Yeah, that's well, congratulations and well deserved. I know you and your personality and the way you are with people. So that is not a huge surprise, but it is a really great honor. So congratulations, you know, that's, thank you. Thank yeah, you, thank you. that's awesome. Yeah. I think, you know, you and I talk about and are involved in speaking of diversity and inclusion. We do a, a lot of different um, talks and, and things um, there. Uh, I, you know, with Ignite last year and some of the other things coming up, um, are you finding, you know, I, I, like we're technologists, right? And I, you know, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm on the marketing side and then I also, you know, help champion those things. Do you find that you're being asked or that you're compelled maybe a little bit more, um, to sort of play in the diversity and inclusion realm, um, these days? Are you finding that you're being asked to do that or you just do it? You know, just curious. It, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I, I guess I've felt for a while that, um, people have reached out to me to help mentor others. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times that from a diversity standpoint, given my background and who I am, that's, that's women in tech, right? right. So um, I have been pulled in a number of times to be like, hey, can you talk to my daughter? Or, hey, yeah. I've got someone on my staff I'd love for you to, to mentor or to talk to. And so from that perspective, um, from a women in tech I, I, I do feel like I've been pulled in yep. somewhat, and it's usually more on a one-to-one -one basis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not running any big programs or right. anything like that. Um, yeah. But but it's it's flattering to me, and it's I I do think it's awesome that what I'm starting to see is that you know the the men that have been in tech for a long time they're becoming you know fathers. They have daughters that are interested in tech, and and. As a result, I'm I'm seeing a lot of support for women in the office in the business world because I think they're starting to connect that right. They want that same kind of support for their daughters, and so I see them really embracing women in tech. And I think that's starting to open their eyes too to the diversity and inclusion at a bigger level. That it's not just women in tech; it's everyone. It's it's humans in IT. I think is is the term I've heard from yep. others. And yep. so <laughs> what I see happening is really things are really starting to open up for everyone, um, yeah. and and people are embracing it as a whole because really. We need more skills in IT. We're desperate for for folks who can who can kind of handle the constant shifting and and the new things that are being thrown out. And it doesn't care, you know, we we don't care who you are as long as you can get in there and dig in and, and learn and do stuff. Like it's great. Yeah. So so yeah, I guess that's a long winded answer, but but yeah, I do. I definitely feel that I'm pulled into some of those mentoring opportunities for sure. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, I I agree with you. I mean, I think there's. It is, it is humans in IT or humans in tech for sure. You know, I think that that shift, I think, you know, we uh, supporting women and, you know, we're continuing to fight against, you know, imbalance and gender and wages and all of those kinds of things. But I do think that there's 
steps in the right direction. And I think that opening up the conversation to make sh making sure that we are inclusive and that we're looking at all the different ways that we are different is super important. And um, yeah, it's been it's been cool to work with the different teams and to work with you and to work with, you know, the women in SharePoint gals and Caruana about conversations on how we can, you know, make sure that we also include, uh, you know, the white males, <laughs> you know, because they're absolutely they're you know, they, <laughs> we want to make sure it's everybody. Yeah. And, you know, on, on that note, too, um, there are smaller things, too, that we don't think about. And, and something that hit me like a ton of bricks the other day, uh -huh. um, someone had posted to Facebook about their challenges with being colorblind. And so, you know, um, there are actually a large number of people that have some level of color blindness, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you might not be black and white. It might be that you have trouble distinguishing between shades of red or shades of blue, or, you know, you have the, the red, brown, you mm -hmm. know, color combinations that are challenging. And someone had posted to Facebook about how it was difficult to read a color coded email and like something so simple that I've done my entire career that, people don't even think about is challenging for others and so just opening up some of those conversations my own children are colorblind my dad is colorblind um in the very basic version of that but it hit me like a ton of bricks that it's in my own family and i never considered that those color-coded emails were a challenge right. um so just you know just kind of spreading the word and and helping people understand what it means to be inclusive and that sometimes it's it's not just, you know, as a person, but it's your everyday interaction yeah. um, and something as simple as an email that can change someone's engagement with, with you. Yeah. So really interesting. That is interesting. I mean, all the times that you see, you know, a lot of the times it's like a, a bold highlight in red, which... You know, yes. if you have and that red specifically as a challenge, right? Yeah. Red is the, the most common challenge with color blindness. So, right. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, I think it is. And it's it's things that we don't often see. You know what I mean? That that is something you don't walk up to somebody and be like, "Hey, I see that you're colorblind." You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's all of those things and the neurodiversity and and understanding that everybody, you know, there's there's mental health issues in our world as well that people don't always respond in the way that if you put air quotes around the word normal, you know. So I think right. all of that is really exciting. And you um, you did a presentation last year in the diversity and inclusion um, track. A couple of them. What what were you presenting on? What was what spoke to you? Because I know that you you had some presentations out there in the world. What were your topics? Yeah, so at Microsoft Ignite last year, I spoke on um, myths of business ownership and kind of my perspective on being uh, a woman in tech and some of the challenges and things that I've run into. And kind of the idea behind it was we are constantly faced with all of these like get rich quick schemes and yeah. like people that think it's, you know, they, they kind of pitch the idea that it's easy to make a lot of money and the, the route to do that is to be a business owner and, you know, the four hour <laughs> work week and, yep. you know, um, it's just all, all you have to do is lean in and, and everything else is, it just follows, right? And right. so I, I just wanted to talk about my journey because all of these people that are, you know, writing these books, I couldn't relate to them. Right. Uh, I don't, I don't have an Ivy League degree. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I went to Ohio State. I have a degree in computer science, which I thought was pretty, you know, pretty good, yeah. right? It's okay. <laughs> and, and, but I, but I didn't graduate from Harvard. I don't have a law degree, you right. know, I don't have an MBA uh, from Yale. So it, those things that, you know, it's great that they, they all felt you know, that they had been successful in what they did, but I, I don't live in Silicon Valley. I live in the Midwest and, yep. you know, I didn't have all these things that these people had. And I was trying to raise a family. I had two small boys as I started my business and it's hard. Yep. It's hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, that you've got to put the work in, you've got to put the time in. Um, but that also, you know, it is possible, even if you aren't, um, you, you don't have that Ivy League degree and you're not living on a coast and, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, like me, you're in the Midwest somewhere. Um, you could you can make it, too. You just put your head down and work. But you've also, you know, you've got to lean on your the people around you for help and, and to open yourself up to that help and, and stuff. So that was kind of the. The, the direction I went with all of that so yeah. myths of business ownership. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, we, we, um, it's like, where, where, where are you dropped into the world? Right. Like it's looking at like how we, each one of us, like we're plunk, you know, and you're like, well, you know, like I grew up in Michigan, you know, for example. And so, you know, it's like what you do with 
that and what you're given and and what your um, uh, opportunities are, you know, who your family is and what kind of education can you get and all that kind of stuff. I mean, all of those things are so valid, right? It's it's kind of the whole deal. So I think that's such a cool topic. Um, did, uh, did you have another one? Am I remembering correctly? Uh, no, I don't think so. Not no? okay. for the diversity track I did. Mm-hmm. Um, at SharePoint Conference, I also participated in the, um, I think it was a Mothers in Tech panel. Um, we had some really great conversations there as well. I actually kind of took note of everyone at, at the SharePoint Conference that had participated. We mm-hmm. did have kind of a smaller group, very yep. intimate group, and yep. reconnected with everybody then at Microsoft Ignite. So oh, cool. for those looking, you know, to reach out and to talk to others, um, you know, we all kind of have similar similar challenges, mm-hmm. you know, women in tech, moms in tech, the diversity thing. Yep. Um, so, so having those group at those large, those groups at the, the big events like that of, um really inspiring you know to get to talk to people and and kind of get their perspective on things totally i mean i don't know one of the best things we can do in our life is build strong friendships and relationships right so that's super cool that you did that i didn't know that that's awesome (laughs) very cool and so you're talking about being a business owner so um i know that you know you and uh mark rackley will you talk about your business and who you are and what you do and all of that so everybody understands that as well and how long you've been in business That'd be great, too. Yeah, so so I started this uh, venture about <laughs> six years ago or so, and mm-hmm. so um, it's called Pate Group. It's Powerful, Alone, Invincible Together is the, the acronym there. And uh, I didn't we do know that, three- by the way. I didn't know that. Oh. Say it again. Oh. Say it again. Power. Yeah, so Pate. It's P-A-I-T, Pate yeah. Group, Powerful, Alone, Invincible Together. Uh, and that's the name that we, and it was kind of one of those things, you know, you come up with a name overnight and yep. you're kind of just throwing ideas out and, and that's kind of where we landed. That's and awesome. um, so we're very team focused and we're a collaboration services group. So it, I thought it made a lot of sense for us, but yeah. uh, we do Office 365 and SharePoint consulting and we're very much in the mid market, although we're starting into some larger enterprise sized businesses now. Um, but what's different about us is that we, we don't do exchange migrations. We don't do um, VoIP implementations, no telephony. We're very focused on the collaboration stack within Office 365 and, and Microsoft tools. So mm-hmm. Teams and SharePoint, um, you know, planner, uh, stream, business apps, meaning power apps and flow. So we kind of, we, we stick to the business side of things and yeah. try to translate the techie stuff to, and make it, you know, valuable to the business. So, so that's kind of what we do. Mm-hmm. And I, I left, I was at a, a different consulting firm, uh, before that, and I was frustrated. And then the reason I left was that you know, they were like, well, why can't you just finish a project and be done, right? It was like email, when you migrate email and you complete it and email works, you know you're finished kind yeah. of thing. Uh-huh. Um, it, it's your point, if you're doing it correctly, it, it kind of continues to evolve and change, and there's always something else you could do. And, um, you know, we we set out to change the the way we were engaging with customers to help them through that process. And that's really what I became passionate about was it's not just tech. Yeah. It's about creating a digital workplace. It's about changing the way people work. And so that's really, that's where our sweet spot is. It's like, how, how do you start that change in that evolution in an organization? And that's, that's where we sit. That's cool. So with kind of all of that that you do, uh, is there something that's bubbling up right now that you're seeing that's sort of across the board for everyone, like all, that all your clients are maybe struggling with or, or wanting to get to? Is there anything that sort of comes top of mind around that? I think right now the the tool set is overwhelming yeah. for a lot of people. You've got yep. so many different things going on in Office 365 that they don't even know where to begin. Right. So the, the conversation we're having over and over is like, what, where do we start? You know, and, mm-hmm. and what? Why do we use Teams versus SharePoint, or why do we use Teams versus Yammer? And just trying to sort out for them what belongs where and and help them with kind of putting a roadmap together and figuring out what's next. So, you know, typically that might start with, let's do the intranet first. That's a SharePoint thing, a modern SharePoint thing, a lot of modern conversations going on right. and, and a lot of migration conversations going on. How do I get from a legacy SharePoint into a modern SharePoint, that sort of thing. Right. Um, so, so it's, but, but the 
outside of just the tech, the conversation is how do we get to kind of diverse groups of people? You've got the folks that have been around forever. They have all the knowledge in your organization and they've you know, been using email for many, many years and they don't want to use other things. <laughs> they don't want, yeah, you know, they don't understand SharePoint. They right. don't understand why we want to do things on mobile. They just want to sit at their desk and print things and print emails and print documents. Um, and then you've got this other generation coming out of college and they've had laptops and tablets and phones so like since they were little and they don't understand why we don't need mobile like why would you why do you think we don't need mobile right I, I need everything my own son sat the other day and updated his Weebly website from his phone wow. on our couch you know and I'm like, what are you doing for there you need to be doing homework and he's like I am doing homework I'm working on my website like on your phone like this is this is how their minds operate and right. so you, the bigger conversation isn't the tech. It's like, how do we bring these two really different groups of people together? And really, it's more like a phased group, mm -hmm. right? We've got those of us in the middle that have kind of seen the evolution and, and kind of need a little bit of both worlds. Yeah. Um, but how do we bring all these people together to, to, to work more efficiently, to communicate better? That's really the message. How do you change people's way of working when they've been so well established and, and yet at the same time embrace the people who are going to be the future of the business? Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really big challenge for a lot of people. And, and being able to influence change with both um, is, is a challenge, but also is a pretty cool thing when you really get that moving Absolutely. Yeah, it's that um, diffusion of innovation curve. It's like the early adopter, you know, the the ones who jump on first, and then you've got that bell curve, you know, and then the laggards, you know, you really, you, you need all of those people in whatever teams that you're putting together for change management or putting together for technology. And you're right, it's not about tech. I mean, it is about the tech and learning the technology, but it's really about human beings and how they are, right? Yeah, I've walked, yes. I, I mean, I've walked into places, too, when they're like, oh, we really like your product, but we don't want to learn anything new. Like, I'm about to get my pension, and I come in every day, and I'm happy to go home and take my kids to soccer <laughs> practice, and that's about it, you know? And that is a huge problem. It's about just, like, how do we mm, get people to be literate, or PC, or technology literate, or human literate on the same level at work, you know? Yeah, you're right. That's a big, that's a big thing, and that it's... And that whole that whole career impact thing is interesting too yeah. right you do you do have people that are leaving the organization soon they're like don't move my cheese i'm almost done right yep. uh, my own grandfather was one of those uh -huh. he was at the end of the evolution of going from paper he was an engineer he always he did all of his drawings on paper and they were like if you need if you want to stick around you've got to learn how to use a computer to you know autocad was the mm -hmm. beginning of all that yep. um and he said no thanks i'm gonna retire you know i don't <laughs> at, at my age i don't want to learn that stuff and so you you do have that set of people yeah. as, as we transition into SharePoint into Office 365 you've yeah. got those that don't want to touch it but what we're also seeing is that this can also be a, a career um, the, the thing that people will remember you for yeah so we've, we've got some people coming in to say hey this is I this is my legacy at this organization I've got two or three years left I want to really change things this is you know the, this is what I want them to remember me for is that I brought all this technology and change in that digital workplace and so they look at it and embrace it as something that they can leave for others and I think that's a pretty cool thing too to be able to to walk out the door and know that that you've transitioned from maybe a legacy intranet and the old way of doing things all the way down to forms on on the manufacturing plant floor right it's a, yeah. it's a pretty neat transition to be a part of absolutely well and it's about finding who that person is right in an organization too and sometimes they're they're sitting there the diamond in the rough waiting to uh you know pop up and be amazing like that yeah that's super cool interesting so um you or speaker, you run around the world, you have clients, you put on conferences, you do all that kind of stuff. So for you, how do you chill out and, you know, find some time and all of that stuff as far as balance goes in your life? So it depends on the time of year. Um, I have different <laughs> different levels of stress relief. Um, in the summer, you will find me at Lake Erie. Um, my mm. mom lives on the water. It's the house she grew up in. Oh. Um, so it's a fantastic place for me to go up and just relax. We go up every weekend all summer long. 
and that's kind of my chill place. I just I could really let go up there. Yeah. Um, but of course, I live in in Ohio, right? So yep. that's maybe three months of the year, mm-hmm. and the rest of the year I have to figure it out. Um, so at the moment, my my kind of stress reliever is to run. Yep. So I'm training I'm training for the Flying Pig Marathon, which is in, <laughs> I think, about two weeks here. Wow. And it's a big, big race in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's a tough course. So it's pretty hilly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what I do. I go run and I say I run until I can't feel my legs and I can't think anymore. So... <laughs> <laughs> I know you went and did a, what was that, uh, Orange Theory or something when we were together you, for the first time, wasn't that right? Yeah, so when we were out in uh, Redmond for the MVP Summit, um, Andrew Connell and Jason Himmelstein and Rob Foster, they talked me into trying Orange Theory, and if you're not familiar, it's this crazy, like, you can, you row, you run on a treadmill, and there's floor extra like weights in in a TRX and so they kind of cycle you through all of these things across the course of an hour and I have to tell you I've been working out for a full year I I did like all this like weights it's through um Beachbody on Mm. the online videos I'm training for a marathon so I feel like I'm in pretty good shape and I walked out of Orange Theory and I was sore for three days. Oh my. <laughs> so if that tells you anything, it's hardcore. <laughs> it's a good workout. Oh my goodness. And um, as far as where do you go and where do you find inspiration? And it can be about anything. It can be tech, work, whatever. You know, is there anything, is there a go-to for you that you're like, oh, I read this person and I love it or some uh, somebody, you know, a blog or edit. I don't know. I'm always interested in sort of what, what sparks you and what gets you moving? So I, gosh, I'm a little bit all over the place mm-hmm. when I need inspiration. It kind of depends on the day. Yep. Um, I will tell you that I feed off of other people when, mm-hmm. when I need to be, to, to feel uplifted or to get inspired working with others. And that's part of why I'm part of the mentorship program. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, as much as it is about mentoring others, I get a lot from it personally. Um, it makes me happy to help other people. And so, um, that, you know, the, the things that other people are going through and that they're working through, they, they inspire me as well. And so I love that. That's, that's for me, that kind of fills my bucket. Um, but I also look to, there's podcasts that I listen to. Rachel Hollis is a big one. If, if you've not heard of her, mm-hmm. um, she has a, a rise podcast. That's oh, really, yeah. um, kind of motivating and inspiring. She's amazing. And, um, gosh, I also, I do a a lot of reading, so you'll find me all over Twitter. I consume a ton of content. So, um, (laughs) you know, I follow a lot of hashtags, random stuff, um, business ownership books that I read. I'm I'm very much a consumer of content. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, I'm all over the place too. It's just depends, but there's so many people in our industry who put out so much great content and then just Brene Brown and those types of folks too make me really happy as well. Um, so, yeah. you know, you've I, I talked about a little bit about owning a business for a while. Is there any advice you have for somebody coming up? And we talked about that a little bit, but is there anything sort of like, you're like, if I could, if I knew this one thing before I started my business and I know that's hard, but, or maybe two, something that is like <laughs> that nugget or four, depending, <laughs> you know? Yes. Gosh, there's so many lessons you learn. You know, in some cases you look back and you're like, man, would I do that all over again? I'm not sure, right? Because it's, it's been tough. It's been challenging. And at the same time, it's like you, you I can't imagine myself doing anything else. I mm-hmm. love it. I love the challenge of all of it. So you know, my advice is, is probably to get control of your fears. Do the fear setting exercises mm. where, you know, the thing that's probably held me back the most was being fearful of things, being fearful of being judged, being fearful of putting out my opinion and my content mm-hmm. and, and the process of letting that go. And, you know, you talk about people that in, that are your mentors or that help you through those things. Part of the reason, um, you know, that, that I have worked so well with Mark Rackley is that when you find a business partner that will push you through some of those boundaries and help you take some of those risks, um, then that pushes you to be your best. And so we're a nice balance of, of being a little risk adverse and, and being more comfortable with it, I think. And that's why we work well together. And he's pushed me through some of those boundaries and 
you know, the, the speaking thing, I'm extremely introverted at times and I was terrified of speaking. It did right. not come naturally to me. Mm-hmm. And he knew this and he's like, I know you can do this. And he would submit me to conferences <laughs> because I wouldn't submit myself. Right. <laughs> so um, when you've got someone who believes in you to that level mm-hmm. and who can push you through that boundary because it's someone you trust, then, yep. then that's the sort of thing I was referring to earlier with find the people that you can trust that you can lean on that will tell you, you know, you need someone who will, who will get in your face and tell you, you shouldn't do this or you should, and kind of help you through that process. Lean on those people, open yourself up to trust them. Um, because when you have that kind of relationship in a place, you can get further, um, because you can push each other. And, And so I think that's super important as a business owner to find someone that can help balance you on that. Yeah, no, for sure. That's awesome. Um, that's so cool. And I, you know, knowing Mark as I do too, it's like, I, I love, I've always loved watching you two together, you know, um, as business owners and colleagues, I, I, you can see that you trust each other and that you work so well together. You know, it's always something that kind of comes through in your relationship and it's super cool to have found that because not everybody does, you know? Yeah, and someone, I think it was the, the Hyperfish uh, quick video that I did. They were like, what's it like to work with Mark Rackley? And I said, you know, offhand, it was like, it's like having a brother, you know, <laughs> where you can, you can like fight like crazy, right? Yeah. But like at the end of the day, you know, that person has your back. Um, yeah. And that, that's kind of how we work, right? Um, mm-hmm. You need someone who's willing to be brutally honest with you yeah. when you're being a pain in the butt. Yep, yep, totally. Yeah. <laughs> and you also need that person. But you know, despite that, you know, that argument or that disagreement that you can come back to the middle yep. um, because you know, they've got, they've got your back. So yeah. definitely, you know, a, a very strong core to pick group is, is that ability <laughs> to be honest with each other and, and yeah. to be able to get through that stuff that's awesome so um where will people see you next in the flesh as it were in the flesh yes so my next event um after i get some work travel out of the way um i will be at sp fest in washington dc here coming up in a couple of weeks so that's at the end of april slash beginning of may that'll be my next event and then i always take the summer off as i mentioned i go to the lake a lot so i try to stay a little closer to home base and spend Mm -hmm. time with the family so uh, but i'm i always enjoy those uh the the sharepoint fest events those are a lot of fun i'll also be at shift happens which is the new af point conference okay um after that so that's in june okay Cool. Well, and I think that work-life balance, taking that time off is smart as well, girl, you know? <laughs> it's like you got to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. you got to do it. Very, very important. you got to take a little time for yourself and for your family. Yep. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Well, awesome. Well, I just, I think you're the berries, and I love that, we, you know, Stephanie and I got a chance to know each other a little bit more, and kind of every time, and it was fun. We actually roomed together, and so that was kind of fun to, like, just be like, how was your day? How was your day? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was awesome. You can be my roommate anytime. Oh. And, uh, you know, I think that's, it's kind of a good thing that, um, so for those that don't know, at MVP Summit, they kind of force you to room with somebody yeah. just to kind of keep cost reasonable and that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. it's been fantastic getting to know you better. Um, yeah. Last year, I got to know Liz Sundit better. Yep. And so, you know, always being able to be paired with folks within the community, I think is, is a great thing. It's always awesome to get to know more of you ladies better. Yeah, definitely. And then, you know, it's like, and then we're like, well, who's going to this event? Let's room together there too, you know? So that's it's been, it's been cool to kind of have that push and then be like, well, wait a minute, we should just keep doing this. So yeah, no, that's totally awesome. So, well, everybody, we will put um, Stephanie's uh, ways to follow her uh, up on uh, the show notes. And do you have, uh, do you have your own, you have your own blog? Yes. I was just up there actually, right? Yeah. I, I do. It's a, I don't keep it quite as up to date mm. as, as the paid group blog. Okay, fair um, enough. Okay. That's <laughs> fine. It's everything that you can find me is Steph K. Donahue. So it's Steph K. Donahue is my Twitter. Um, Steph K. Donahue.com is my, my blog site as well. Perfect. So, um, okay. and, and if you put that in on LinkedIn, I show up there too. I try to stay consistent. So. You are, you get an A plus for personal brand. How about that? To have it same, 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 oh, same, same. That's awesome. No, seriously. <laughs> no, I, I don't know that I deserve an A plus for keeping my blog up to date. There's some good stuff out there, but I definitely owe that blog a little attention right now. Yeah, understood. <laughs> well, okay. Well, 
you know, when you have a spare moment. So anyway, um, I just want to say thank you for being on the show. And it's great talking to you and hearing about your past and your future and all the goodness that's happening. So I appreciate you being on, Stephanie. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Well, folks, um, this has been another Mavens Do It Better podcast. And you can find us on iTunes, on Spotify, on the MavensDoItBetter.com website. And here is to another beautiful day on this big blue spinning sphere. Thanks. The original music on this podcast was created by Jesse Case.